for, um, I think, uh, our second or third SCORE uh, workshop. Um, these are wonderful because uh, SCORE comes in and provides the, the information and the knowledge that we host. Um, and my um, program manager, Monica Katz, does all the work, so I just get to walk in here and, and, and welcome you. Um, <coughs> We have uh, several um, programs under what's called our Entrepreneurial Education Program. Um, on September 25th, and by the way, these are all over here. You can grab them on your way out. We have a, a session on, on uh, intellectual property um, by the Pirate Fight Club. Um, we have a Veterans Entrepreneurial uh, Breakfast on September 26th. So if you're a veteran and you're interested in becoming part of the network, we do that monthly. That's part of our outreach program. We also do something that's pretty interesting called the Arts and Business Luncheon Series. We've been doing that for about three years, um, where we have a visiting artist um, who discusses his or her artwork on campus, that we steal for an hour and they talk about their business. And that's a, a luncheon series. Um, we're also doing the third year of, of a community engagement event called Indoor Trick or Treating. Um, when Mont first approached me about this, I said, well, maybe we'll see what happens. And then we had 250 people show up year one. Last year, we had 500. So it's a great community engagement event. It's people in the incubator. And one of our clients um, actually does the, some of the characters and, and some of the stuff for the kids, right? House. Playground Academy in LLC, right? We also uh, have a gallery here, so if you're interested right now, James East has his uh, paintings in the gallery, and you're welcome to go down and look at it afterwards. But without further ado, uh, um, we'll uh, get started here. Almarie, right? Almarie. Yes. Um, is going to give our workshop here today. And so welcome, thank you, and um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me or Monica in the back, who's our program manager, and Thanks very much, and thanks to Ted Sharon for filming us today. So thank you everybody, good morning. And actually, this is the second event I've done here. I did starting to manage managing your business all day on a Saturday, and Monica was my colleague. Uh, it was a great session, and it's a pleasure to come back and talk about crowdfunding. We're in collaboration, SCORE's in collaboration with the Small Business Administration. It's terrific that we're developing the collaboration with the Fredonia Incubator and to be able to bring more of the resources and the support down to the area uh, would be terrific. I drive in from Rochester, which is great. Someone had asked about where SCORE is. It's across the United States and uh, we'll have one of our SCORE ventures to talk more about that relationship. Crowdfunding is a topic that can be huge or small. And there's so much in the crowdfunding space right now, but there's so many ways that you can actually finance your business. And what I would like to do over the next hour and a half is just encourage the conversation and bring you through the whole spectrum. Okay, and really set up the time to be able to develop the workshop into something that works for you. But before I get started, I would like to introduce Jeff, who's going to talk a little bit about SCORE and the relationship with Fredonia, and just a little bit more about what we do. So, Jeff, Thank you're on. Thank you. You got some, some coffee. Boy, collaboration, that's, now that sounds, somehow that sounds like underground or something along those lines. Good morning, everyone. As Al Marie has said, my name is Jeff Corcoran. Uh, Al Marie has uh, graciously offered to give me uh, about five minutes to talk about SCORE. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with SCORE, SCORE is a nationwide group of volunteer mentors. Um, we're in every state. Um, we have chapters, many, many chapters, so that we can cover every state. We are the Buffalo Niagara chapter, uh, number 45, which means SCORE now has 300, and we're the 45th one to, to form out of the 300. Um, we cover eight counties, all right, with a whole bunch of services. Uh, our number one known is mentoring. Um, I shouldn't be doing this, Michael. You should be doing it. I'm my coffee, and you do a much better job. Michael is one of my uh, my clients, and uh, 
We also offer a lot of other services, but chiefly amongst mentoring, we offer you access to all kinds of information. Each one of us is a volunteer. We all have a background in business. Um, we mentor in various places at various times, and uh, we do it at your convenience. Um, we have access through either the 70 mentors who work out of what is the Buffalo Niagara chapter. Um, we can access their expertise, which includes everything uh, from information like this that Al Marie is our expert in, to manufacturing, to retail, you name it. And if we don't have it locally, we have a resource of using any one of our mentors throughout the country. So um, there's a lot of value, and the price is right, uh, it's all free. Now, I've given each one of you uh, one of these folders. I think, did I miss somebody? I think somebody snuck in behind me. Yeah, how dare you do that. Um, what I chiefly want to talk about, and I know some of you um, are not from Chautauqua County, but for those of you who are, or Chautauqua County uh, is much closer for you, we will effective now uh, start mentoring on a full-time basis. Now, when I say full-time, what happens is we have satellite offices. Our chief mentoring office uh, is on Niagara Street in downtown Buffalo. Uh, you certainly don't want to go from here to there. At least I don't think you are. Um, I do that. I live right here in Chautauqua, about 15 minutes away. Um, and I am now the point person on our newest uh, satellite office. We are effective now, and uh, hopefully you'll be the first group of people, or those of you who want mentors, we are now mentoring on a scheduled basis here in Chautauqua, or we will next October. Um, I have my business cards here, and this is kind of a two-step process. Starting October, there is a uh, website, buffaloniagara.score.org, which is our main uh, website here, and that's part of our chapter. You can go there next month, and you will find our schedule for mentoring here in Chautauqua County. The way it's going to work is we're going to do it here uh, in this part of the county, obviously in Dunkirk, and then we're going to do it in uh, Jamestown. Jamestown will be in the evening, 4, 5, and 6. Don't know the day yet. And here will be 10, 11, and 12. So we will be doing it at two different time slots. We can't give you information on the slots. We are uh, really, you didn't hear this from me, but we are really, really hoping we can do it here. Um, but you will find out all that information is available starting next month. In the interim, if you're looking for a mentor, uh, we don't want to hold you up because uh, how many here are already in business? Oh. <laughs> uh, we, we uh, looks like about half, 40% of you are already in business, and some of you are new. Um, my personal specialty is I work with new startups. Um, we have other people that uh, work with existing businesses who either have issues or are trying to grow. Um, I will leave my business card, you can contact me, my email, and uh, actually it's my home phone number on there. You can contact me, I will connect you with mentors uh, if you want a mentor down in this area. Uh, Bill Andrews, uh, my uh, fellow mentor, is going to be in the Jamestown area. I will be doing it here, uh, and next month you'll be able to register online. I'll be around for a few minutes. Um, as I say, here's our brochure, it gives you all the information about SCORE. And as I say, I'll stick around. I'll leave some of my business cards up here. And if uh, you feel like you at least more information about mentoring, take my card and I'll be happily uh, to help you. Okay. Yeah, what did I leave? Would you like to introduce yourself? Please do. Oh, hi. Uh, good morning. My name is John Sawinski, and I'm in a training phase here. So I'm training to become a mentor. Uh, I work here uh, in Fredonia. I live in Jamestown, New York. I'm currently in the, uh, I love to go wholesale business. I've been in the wholesale business almost all my life. And for 10 years, I uh, worked for a small business management consulting firm where I travel the country helping small businesses. So now it's kind of a natural outgrowth for me to just help small businesses. It's just my passion. 
and uh, score opportunity came along, and I said, "God, this is I just love this." So I just I have to probably about maybe another month, and I sure hope I have all my qualifications, and I look forward to hopefully working with any or all of you. Thank you so much. And knowing that he's local, I just recruited him for our team. <laughs> yes. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, a, you know, I'm here, I'm a spy, you know, I'm taking people, you know, to get Go ahead, introduce, come on, just introduce yourself. Oh, I'm uh, John Haran. I'm also a score mentor. And I came down here because I thought I should learn about this. And uh, I'm traveling all the time on my business and doing pretty busy. And uh, this was a shot to come down here, so, so that's why I'm here. Usually I find out when I, I, I start businesses for a little, I mean, that's what I've always done. I'm kind of a serial business starter kind of guy. And uh, usually what happens, I'll learn about, you know, I go everywhere and look at everything. And something I'm not interested in pops up and that's why I end up running a business. So I'm, I'm doing that all the time. And when I fall over someday, then I'll stop. <laughs> We're over our five minutes, so okay, that, just give, that just gives you We're good. five seconds. Just to go to show you, in order to keep up with the trend, we also have to study. So we can keep up with uh, what you need, and uh, so we can stay about a quarter of an inch ahead of your needs. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. So I'm Almarie Felgo, and I am your crowdsourcing person. There has been a lot of movement in crowdsourcing over the last two years, just significant. And what I'm going to do in the next hour and a half is talk about, I want to talk about regulation crowdfunding, because everybody knows Kickstarter, everybody knows GoFundMe, but nobody knows this regulation crowdfunding that came in two years ago, and it's very, very powerful. So it's an equity crowdfunding, it's also sometimes called investment crowdfunding, when you hear the breweries have locally crowdfunded their way in, this is the way they've done it. So I'm going to take you from end to end on just that whole of that whole process. And do we have a clipper? There we go. So the purpose of the workshop today is, and you've heard it here, the future is the small and mid-sized businesses. Over 98% of the economy right now is businesses under 500 employees. And that's where the growth is coming from in our economy. When you think about large corporations, you think about, well, you know, Xerox can get funded, General Motors can get funded, but how do I fund this winery? How do I fund this startup? They're not going to give, you know, what are, what are my choices other than my own, my own equity? And, and this whole crowdfunding thing that's emerged has become really, really popular. You're very familiar with traditional lending. And um, I'm going to show you later one slide on traditional lending because we're not going to talk about that. But I want to get it off the, out of the way and say, well, what about loans? What about the SBA? Or what about grants? Well, you know what? Yeah, you can lend that way. But I want to just go through that as a foundation or a, a straw man update to say, we know they exist. But we're talking about crowdfunding this morning inside of that, or inside of that um, area. It's emerging, it's powerful, and it's really an exciting way to put together your funding for your business. Um, I want to share the financing alternatives as an update, as just a background so you know where it fits. The other thing is that, like I said, I think you probably have heard about GoFundMe. You may have used it to give a donation to somebody uh, just as a, a courtesy or a return, and that platform was there. Everybody knows Kickstarter, right? But have you heard of regulation problem? And that's the one that's in the background that's really driving it, that's really very, very, very large. So whether you're established or a startup, this is a very creative way to be able to consider funding for your business, and that's um, in a way to develop your plan, because you should have a plan for how to fund your business. Okay? And this can fit in as one of those areas. We're going to use about two hours. I think we're scheduled to go until 10.30. If there's questions, please ask questions through it because the discussion is as valuable as the information I'm going to go through. And then um, the decisions are yours. For you to be able to select 
the funding sources that are best for you and your business. Okay, yours might be different than yours. Yours might be different than yours. And they should be, because it depends upon your business model and what you're trying to accomplish. Okay? The, there are lots and lots of traditional funding sources. Okay, and if I missed ones, that's why I put the word others here. Okay? There might be an agriculture loan that I missed. There might be a veterans loan that I missed. There are tons of alternatives for financing. Everybody knows that a lot of the startups self-fund. You use your personal savings. You might use, uh, your family might support you. You might take the equity out of your home. And you, you can self-fund. We have found in the future, but the data is about two years old when I say this, but I think it's probably very valid today. Over 50% of the startups self-fund. And that's what we found in our prior data and score. And I don't think that's changed very much, but it's so fun. The other thing is everybody knows loans. You can get a loan from your bank. You can get a loan from the credit union. You can get a loan. Um, you, your credit cards are loans. you got to pay them back. They're guaranteed. Okay, it's loan. You can use your credit cards, but it's a loan. You can use online portals for loans. Okay? You can use nonprofit lenders. It's a loan. And a nonprofit lender is someone who will align their mission to yours. So if you're in the pet business and the lender is, is for uh, the support of animals, they'll give you a loan. So you can align that way. The other item I want to just go back to is micro loans because they're very, very powerful if you're trying to grow a business. Okay. Let me give you a real true example that occurred over the last couple of months it's in process. Business is going along at this level. They want to reach out and grab this huge contract, but they don't have the basis for it. They want to respond to an RFI, RFP, request for information, request for proposal, get to the point of request for quote, and put it in. And they said, you know, we can do that work, but I don't have the money to support it. If you land that contract, a micro loan will lend against that contract. So they will, if you can bring them a signed contract, you went for that RFP, RFQ, it was rewarded to you, you know you don't have that base, bring that signed contract to a micro loan lender, someone like Capstone is terrific, they will advance you those funds. And then you pay it back when the money comes in because large corporations pay in 90 days. And that's the way you can jump to the next level using a micro loan. So there's a couple of different ways to be able to use that. And then there's all this other stuff. Angel investors, Shark Tank, equity, Shark Tank. Okay? They take a piece of your business in return for giving you the money. And they probably want to sit on your board and want a controlling interest too. There's public offerings, stock sales. But you're a little bit too small to sell stock. You could. If this is another way. The equity crowdfunding is the way around that. Invoice, finance, invoicing, uh, financing your accounts receivable. Timing. Retail businesses use this. If you factor your accounts receivable, because I'm doing it right now. I'm right now a uh, closing company, a major company inside of Buffalo. My background is all business operations um, from Rochester through Silicon Valley. Most recently, recently, when um, General Motors went bankrupt, we created Ally Financial, and I set up the automotive loan division. So my operations background is from here to here, okay? You've got timing and accounts receivable. You know the money's going to come in, but they don't pay for 90 days. You can sell that accounts receivable, okay? And that's what this is. You're going to take a discount, probably 30 to 40 percent. But it might be worth it if you've got the volume to churn through, right? Then grants, everyone says, well, I can get a grant. Yep, go for them. Good luck, don't count on them. You're going to need everything else along with it. And then finally, crowdfunding. Okay? And there's three types of crowdfunding. There's the donation space, go fund me. Somebody says, help me with the medical bill. I, help me, you want to give a gift to a child when they were born, a friend's child. It's often 
a GoFundMe. There was uh, an unfortunate situation. You want to contribute. That's GoFundMe. Okay? Kickstarter is all the fun stuff. It's rewards based, but you're raising ten to twelve thousand dollars, maybe fifteen thousand dollars. You don't have to conform to the SEC regulations, you don't need financial statements, you don't need any of that stuff, and you can get on Kickstarter. Everything I tell you today about equity crowdfunding and regulation crowdfunding applies if you do Kickstarter, okay? It's a little bit loose, but don't dare do it without a business plan. Don't dare do it unless you know where you're, you're going with your company and how it fits. If you do it, you know, you're rolling the dice, but uh, my, my recommendation is always to integrate your funding into your business plan, whether you're a startup going forward or you're, you're trying to go to a next level. What's neat about the regulation crowdfunding is it's new regulation. It only came in two years ago. And I was so excited when I saw this. I saw this, I want to say in October of 2016, and said, Wow, this is powerful. And it's powerful because if the SBA was here, they're going to go around the room. Who's going to open a restaurant? Oh, we don't fund that. Gee, who's going to open a brewery? Oh, it's high risk. We don't fund that. Who's going to open a retail store? Gee, we don't do that either. That's, we don't do that. Okay? And you have this whole group of very real businesses that need to be funded. But you know what? The SBA is going to go back and say, well, if I give you a loan on that, what are your personal assets? You're going to have to guarantee it. You're paying it back. Even if you go under, you're paying it back. Okay? The way around that high risk is what the other side of those businesses are. They're fun. You know, whether you have an event that's uh, for people to come and love and enjoy it, whether it's a service business, whether it's a winery that needs startup, they're fabulous businesses. A lot of those businesses have used this regulation crowdfunding to get the funds for that. I think I was introduced to this two years ago, and I was so fascinated, and it's one of the examples I'm going to show later. There's a company called N1CE. It's nice. They're alcoholic um, popsicles, and they're a big deal across Europe. They're, they, they were moving into the United States. We'll talk about it later. That's how they got started. They did regulation crowdfunding. They raised, I think, $800,000 in the first round, and I'll show you that later. But that always fascinated me. You can go to their websites and see what they do. But, you know, look at loans. I'm not going to do that. That's alcoholic. I'm not going to do that. That's um, that's uh, concerts. Oh my God! Don't call it blog packs and concerts. I'm not going to fund that. They did it this way to the Fed. We'll talk about that later. Nice N1 CE. You'll see it later in the presentation. But I wanted to show you that because they were one of the first through. And then I have another example. One of the crowdfunding sources I really like right now is Republic. And I took one off of their website Sunday, one in process, so I'll show you one in process also, as to how this is done, okay? So, but what I want to leave you with is, we're talking about this today, right? Everything here applies to Kickstarter. Just dummy it down, okay? Net it down. But everything here applies, if you're going to crowdfund, whether it's Kickstarter or the regulation, all the best practices in it are the same. You should do those. Okay, and we're talking about their crowdfunding. But what I want to leave you with is, you're probably, to fund your business or grow your business or move it to the next level, you're going to use a mix of funding sources. You might need um, a working capital loan just to run your daily operations, tied to your checking account. You may need, you might take some money from your personal savings. Your suppliers are a great source of providing you support because they will give you the goods or the services and you don't pay them for 90 days or 30 days. That's a way of using somebody else's money. Okay? You're, when you look at your business, you, it won't be one of these that funds your business, but
but it will be a mosaic of several of those to fund your business. And everybody should be have should you should have that in your business plan, and you should know very much how you're going to work that capital and work that financing. So I I want to I want to. Uh, This was in CNN Money. But I want to start with the key messages that we're going to work through over the next hour so that you know where I'm going. Because of the risk, and invest the amount that an investor can invest is limited. And I'll show you how that works. Okay? A company can only raise up to $1 million in a year. You could raise another million next year and the next year. I'll show you how that works. The funds come in small amounts, just like Kickstarter, $10, $40, $100, right? You have, to, if you're going to do regulation crowdfunding, you can't do it yourself. You have to hand it off to a third party to do it for you, like a third party intermediary. It's usually a funding portal because you're small. A broker dealer would be large. We'll talk through that. Once the process is started, there's separation of duties. Your hands off, the third party's right. Okay. You must have a following. You gotta have a list of email addresses, something that can provide that funnel in the front so that you have interest before you get started. You gotta have a business plan and you have to be able to present your business plan and show how that funding fits into your business plan. Jeff talked about SCORE moving down here. Tremendous opportunity to build that plan with SCORE mentors that have the experience, whether you're retail, uh, bricks and mortar, e-commerce, you gotta build that business plan. Your financials must follow SEC guidelines, okay? And you really want to develop your crowdsourcing campaign in detail so that you know, like, you know what rewards you're gonna get. Give me $25 and you're gonna come to pocket. Give me $50, I'm going to give you a signed uh, program book. Give me $100, I'm going to give you the first alcoholic popsicle at that event to go in, in, in a year, and you'll be invited. Okay. The other part of that is you get to time it. So it isn't like a bank loan where next month you got to pay 50 bucks. The month after that, you get to set the parameters inside the crowdfund. We're going to talk about all this stuff. I just wanted you to know where we're going with it. And do the what ifs. What if I merge? What if I sell? What if I grow too fast? Do I want to pay it back? Do I not want to pay it back? Do I want to leave the money on the balance sheet? Those are all questions that you should be talking about as you're putting your business plan together. And if this is the funding source, then it's critical, you know, that you really understand how it fits. So, um, first, this is a little bit of background. You don't have to be a millionaire to invest in startups. August 2018. And if you read what I put in blue, the SEC just adopted new rules since the May 2016 so that you could raise money through crowdfunding. And anybody can do this. The, you can invest as little as $40, and in some cases as low as 10. These blue items will be the header of every slide going forward. So we'll, we're going to drill down. You can empower your customers to own a stake in your company. Isn't that fabulous? Your customers love you. They're your customers. They want to support you. Let them give you the $10 for a return to support your business. They will grow your constituency. They will grow your base. And you know what? They think it's fun to watch you succeed because they love you. They want to be a part of your success, and they want to make that happen too. The actual users were invested. And, and like I said, it's, it's very key. They want to be a part of it. Why would you exclude them? You know, they want to be associated with you. It's their affinity group. You drive down the road in a Harley Davidson, you wave to each other, right? Because everybody's driving a Harley. Well, you know what? You can have the same experience with an affinity group around your business. And they're all going to be throwing 10 bucks 
It's, it's an asset on your balance sheet. You're not required to pay it back. Okay. Think about it as stock. If your stock goes to zero, do you have to pay it back? No. This works the same way. Okay. But you should, ex they should be expecting a return. You have to lay that out in your plan as you go forward. But this can be a blast as a way to grow your business just with email addresses and associations and, and working forward. It's smart to diversify. Whether you're a large company and you got a gazillion dollars, which I don't, and you're diversifying your stock portfolio, you can diversify and put something into startups. It's going to cost you 50 bucks, 100 bucks. Uh, Republic has a great website that has a calculator for your $100 investment or your $50 investment. And you can track it through and see how the key points that happen will pay you back maybe 100%. Get $100 back. You might get $200 back. Um, Republic is the name of a third party. Republic. And we'll talk about that actually in the next slide. The, uh, the, well, there's choices on the way those investments can be made. And you set the choices in your business plan before you make the offering through the third party. Okay? And you set those parameters. And you set those milestones. And you set those checkpoints as to how it's going to pay out and where it's going to pay out. You, um, you're limited to a million dollars that you could raise in a 12-month period through regulation crowdfunding. You can, your net worth, if somebody's going to invest, if I'm going to invest in your crowdfunding, I have to have a net worth of at least $107,000. Don't ask me where the seven came from. But you have to have a net worth of $100,000, okay? I have examples that I'm going to show you how that's calculated later. And uh, the government also caps, well, they cap how much you can invest, and they cap how much the startup can get. So as we go through this, I'm going to approach it from two sides. If you're an investor through a crowd regulation crowdfunding, this is what to expect. If you're going for regulation crowdfunding, this is how you do it. Right? And then you had asked a question about Republic. This was just off of uh, their website. Why is this a big deal? It's a big deal because before no one, like us guys in the room, unless somebody here is worth a million bucks, you couldn't do it. You couldn't play. You had to play through equity. You had to play through Shark Tank. You had to play through being an angel investor. So it opened up a huge door for people like us to be able to support your local brewery down at the corner to 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 uh, open the business and when you go in and you have a beer you're a part of it and you're getting the return and you see what that is that's why it's a big deal it's also called title three you could raise up to a million um, it might sound dry i love this but this is big Opportunities that were once reserved for individuals that can afford to lose $100,000. Well, I wish if I would win the lottery, I would love to have that money too. I don't. But you know what? I give 100 bucks to a startup. I give 100 bucks to a colleague in Rochester. I drove from Rochester that was starting a business all day long. I spent $100 at Whiteman. Why would I give $100 to a colleague? It's, it's very, very powerful. Okay? So I'm excited. Let's go to the next step. This, the slide we're going to go through right now, I'm going to provide an overview of regulation crowdfunding. Just drill right in. I will show you how the amounts that people invest are limited. We'll do some calculations. We'll talk about how the government has capped which you could raise through this, but remember, you could raise a million this year, you could raise a million next year. And it's your 12-month cycle, okay? You're going to use the security that best benefits your business. You're going to choose, are you giving promissory notes? Are you giving convertible stock? Are you giving equity? Are there going to be trigger points where you're going to buy it out if you cash it out? You're going to set up that structure. 
Um, the example, then one CE, and then the current offering through um, Republic, because I thought it was really cool. It's drones. It's very, very cool. So it's very timely. Preparation. Uh, the funding portal that we'll talk about is the third party that represents you. It's done through a third party because targets are set. There's a minimum amount you want to raise, like a median amount and a max. If you don't raise the minimum, the money's going back and you're still paying the bill to do the crowdfunding to the third party. If, um, and all that money's kept in escrow, you can't touch it while it's being raised. But if it's raised after that, the third party can take their fees off the top and they give it back to you. But you've got to be like a grown-up business and file financials and, you know, track your business plan and keep your constituency current. So we're going to talk about what a funder portal does versus uh, what a broker dealer does. And then if you're going to implement, then success factors. So if you're going to do this, let's do it in a positive way. Yeah, question? Uh, I just wondered, uh, do you have a handout or can you forward us this presentation? Uh, well, I can talk to Monica about getting yeah, yeah. a summary over to people. Sure. Make sure that. that you sign. Um, I don't know if you signed into the wrong sheet, but um, there's a sign-up sheet and put your email address on there. We'll make sure you get a copy. Thank you. Okay. So, what is regulation crowdfunding? Two years ago, the SEC put in regulations for crowdfunding. You know what I think happened? And just going back, because I loved this two years ago when I saw it, I said, oh my gosh, this is a whole new area. They're going to finance through this. We didn't control it. We better control it. But we can't stop it. So let's just put some safeguards around it. And that's what happened in May of 2016. The rules of crowdfunding, what it did is it basically, before there were restrictions that could never be done, it removed those exceptions. Okay? It allows you to do it across states. So it's intrastate. Um, the N1CE example is really global. Uh, it was Europe and the United States. However, the regulation said you can now go across states. A, a for-profit can raise a million dollars. I've seen this in not-for-profits too, but it was designed so that for-profits can raise a, a million dollars during a 12-month period. You can have accredited and non-accredited investors. I'll show you a slide on that. All that means is how much are you worth? So you're not accredited if you're like me, where you're poor, and you're accredited if you've got a gazillion dollars. And we'll talk about that, and that's all that means. Prior, though, when you think of angels, and you think about equity investing, they're accredited investors. They have a lot of money, a high net worth, and that avenue wasn't open to us. It's now open to us. We are non-accredited investors that we can play to. Okay. The, if you're accredited, there's no limit on what you can raise. Well, yeah, that's like selling stock in your company. It's like, I'm kidding. That's no, you know, that's not a big deal. We know that. Accredited investors always could raise a ton of money. Those are angels and investors. And then um, federal rules rule. If states have their own crowdfunding, Federal comes first, state comes second. Okay? And that's true whether it's taxes, that's true whether it's SEC regulations, federal rules first, state comes second. Okay? States have crowdfunding acts. Last time I looked, over 30 states had crowdfunding acts. It might be more than that because it's been about a year since I looked. Florida, which is where I think I live, but I'm here, has their own. Why would you ever use a state act rather than going for the federal one? Why not just use the federal one and apply it locally? There are situations, if you are state specific, your business is only in a certain state. That's where your customers are. You're never going to grow further. Look to see if your state has a crowdfunding act. It might be a little bit less restrictive than the federal one. Okay. So it might have some advantages for you locally. Um, if you look at the Florida one, you just do the regulation one, and if you want to also apply to Florida, you can do that. But I do want to bring up that uh, 
The states have it also. The purpose of the state is to use it within the state. And then the other purpose of filing it in a state is, just like on the federal level, if there was anything that preempted you from doing this on a federal level, the state wanted to make sure that any of those restrictions were removed so you can play crowdfunding within the state. You must do it through a registered intermediary. You must. Right? You have two choices, a funding portal or a broker-dealer. A broker-dealer is somebody that you know every day. They sell stock, they sell bonds, they sell investments. They, a million dollars is way too small for them. They don't play a million bucks, they play at the high level. Right? They play in pension funds. They pay in in um, tops right now with some of this funding to pull us through bankruptcy. That's where they're playing. They also provide services that you don't need to move forward if you've got your business plan lined up. Because your business plan is everything that's in the application. Okay? And then what the third party intermediary does is repackage it to be able to find it. So, a broker dealer, when you hear that, is, is possible. For the regulation crowdfunding, it's mostly done through third party intermediaries. Also, uh, the financial industry regulation, FINRA, a lot of the funding portals are also FNIRA approved for public. You know, that's just saying that I'm, I'm tying to the, to the standards of moving forward with the crowdfunding uh, requirements. So, what does an intermediary do? Crowdfunding investors are also required to, to register with the intermediary. They have a pool of resources that you don't have. You're coming to the table with all your email addresses, your friends and family who want to buy that bottle of wine or buy that beer, but they've got a whole group of investors too that are registered with them. And remember, the amounts they're putting in are 50 bucks, 100 bucks. They have another whole avenue of investors for them. They're registered with the SEC. They have to be approved. They're registered with the SEC. Um, they're going to provide, you're going to put your value proposition, your pitch, on their site. So if you've done your marketing plan, and you know what you're selling, and you know what your value proposition is, and you did an investor deck, it's going on their site. So they are giving you the exposure where you don't have to put it on your website, you don't have to build your own website, you're using their engine to get to raise your funds. They manage, as a third party, they manage the cash and or the transfer of stock. So like we talked about earlier, if you invest with them, that money's held in escrow until that money's raised, and they hold it. And there's a separation of duties there. They control all that, and they control it consistent with the regulations. They offer supportive services. I've seen them, if you want to for a fee, they'll write your business plan. Okay? I'm telling you, you write your own business plan because you should know what's in it. But for a fee, they will write your business plan. They will provide coaching at your business because they do have expertise to be able to, to uh, offer the funding. So they offer some general supportive services. Look at a couple of the different. Um, look at the couple of the different ones and select the one that fits you the best. But they do have supportive services, and their target is small firms, not accredited. Okay, brokers are large firms accredited. Small firms, not accredited. Because they perform limited services, they don't have to register as a broker dealer. And the new laws came out and said, okay, these new funding portals are cool. They don't have to be broker-dealers. As long as they don't do the stuff the broker-dealers do, like provide a valuation of your business. That's something a broker-dealer would do. They're not going to do that. They don't have those services. But that's okay. Okay? So a broker-dealer performs business valuations, analyzes opportunities, and their target is huge. These guys, you don't need to do that. That's not your audience. 
Your audience is you're raiding funds in small amounts from non-accredited sources. Okay? So when you select a portal that rep to represent you, think about these questions, just like you would select a financial institution, just like you would select an accountant. Do they know your industry? Have they had any experience in it? How many investors do they have registered? Because that reach will go on top of yours. Well, I, I do pay to that, I'm sorry. Are, do they actively market themselves? Are they healthy? Because it's two years old, there's going to be some collapse in this industry too. What types of coaching do they provide? Are they the types of coaching you need? that you like, would that be of value to you? Because this is going to come in fee, so why not take advantage of it? And then, can, are, do they have adequate funding for themselves? So just like we said up front, when you finance your business, you're going to use a mix of things to finance your business. When you look at the portal, what's right for you may not be right for you because of your business, where your business is, what your business represents. They're all right answers because you selected one and you selected a different one doesn't mean they're wrong, it means it fit, it fit you. Like you would have selected your attorney, your accountant, your score mentor. Okay? Uh, I strongly recommend take the resources that are there and available to you. Okay, how much can you invest? These are the rules. Alright? If you make it's based on your annual income and your net worth. If you make less than $100,000 a year and you have a net worth of less than $100,000, you can't invest. The government wants to make sure that people don't use equity crowdsourcing like you use a casino. Pull the trigger, get the jackpot, and now comes this huge money. If you can't afford it, you can't play. If you can't afford to lose the money, you can't play. The intermediary does all this for you. Okay, so just take this as a FYI. This is what they do. You don't have to do it. They're going to do it for you. But you need to know what they're doing as a part of the service that they offer. They will make sure that if a person fills, fits in this category, they can't. I have a question. Sure. Um, does that take into account, does that go by tax returns? Like if you're married, they look at it? I, I mean, my guess is they look at uh, several things. Did they probably look at some sort of financial statement and make the decision? But the third party does that for you. And um, sure, if you've got it in your home, you don't have it in the checking account, it would apply. But they're going to do that for you because their goal is to be that third party that says, yep, they're okay. No, you're not okay. But just think of it as if you're going for a loan. Everybody's financial statements look different. They have a way of going. And you want them to make the decision, not you. Yes? Uh, I was wondering, how do these intermediaries stay in business and make their money? Do they take a small percentage? Yeah, they take the percentage off of the what's raised. And I'll show you some examples of what those percentages are later. Yes. Um, they get a percentage off of what's raised. They pay themselves back off of what's raised, but be careful, if you don't raise it, you still owe them some fee. What? So we would have to pay, if it doesn't raise any money, we have to pay them for using their services? There's, because, yes. That's why you set the minimum so low Yeah. that they get their percentages back. Yes. And we'll talk about that later. That's a great question. Okay. Now, hey, did you know that you're not accredited if you make $100,000 a year and you're worth over $100,000 a year, that's pretty big in today's economy. But you're considered not a credit. So you're capped at $2,000 or 5% of the lesser of your annual income or your net worth. So if you make $100,000 a year or $100,000 a year, we'll look at that, you can only put in a maximum of $2,000. Or 5% of your annual income or 5% of your net worth. That's because you can afford to lose it. You might hit a speed bump, but you can afford to lose it and it's not going to take you down. Okay? If you're accredited, you make over $200,000 a year and you're worth over a million. 
<laughs> you're capped at hundred thousand dollars a year of an investment in through one of these avenues. So government regulation, this is the way they said uh, they're forcing you to diversify and they're making sure that whatever you lose, it's not like going to the casino, putting you know a million bucks in a slot machine and, and losing it all. That's the purpose of this. So look at some examples. Your income is thirty thousand dollars. Your net worth is one hundred and five. You're considered not accredited low. You fall into this category. You can you can put in two thousand dollars or five percent of thirty or five percent of one hundred and fifty. Hmm. The biggest amount is two thousand dollars. Look at this example. You make one hundred fifty a year, but you're not worth a whole lot. Your house is the tank in the market. Okay. You're not a credit at all. You can put in 2K or 5%, right? You can put in $4,000. 5% of In the same thing, high, you're into the different one. 10% for 10% of 100K. You can put in 10K. Okay. In a different income, a different net worth, put in 20K. And if you're accredited and you're making a lot of money, you're still top stopped at a hundred thousand dollar investment. Is the limit per startup or is it per person? Per person. So great question, right? That's how much you could put in across all your crowdfunding. So you can still get forty bucks to this person and fifty dollars to that person, but you personally can't lower those limits. It's a great question. Actually, just go back to that person's question. Like, again, how, how do they determine your... I would say, you know, get on the phone with a couple of them. Yeah. And ask them for their process. Yeah. They look for financial statements. They look for you to fill out a form, for you to... You no know, different than going for a bank loan. You know, you got to go in, fill out the form, make sure it's accredited. What happens is, if you go to the websites, you sign up as an investor. So they pre-screen you and put you in as an investor through their process. And then you can select, you know, which ones you want to be able to play. And it, it does, I mean, obviously I understand why they do that, but it does seem like a somewhat of a concern for those people that are going to want to do that $50 investment. Like, no, it's invest free. It's free for you to sign up and do this. Yeah. It's no charge. If you want to do this, it's free, it's easy, go sign up. I did one because I have an investor, just so you know. I have seen people use this. I love it. I have not personally invested, but I went to a site and signed up. And that's why I said, um, so I wanted to find out what it would be like. And if one of my friends puts a brewery in there, of course I'll invest. But I did that. It's, it's real simple. Real simple. Go do it. Okay? So, the next question is, let's talk more about raising money for crowdfunding. When you go forward and you want to use this intermediary to raise the money, okay, you have to identify what's the minimum, your question, what's the minimum amount I'll accept? Well, these numbers in friends, a year ago they were the median for, for a group of like 30 that I looked at. They said the minimum I've been accept is $100. So as long as the crowdfunding raises over $100, They'll take their fees off the top, it's the minimum I'll accept. Okay? The target amount is how much do I want to raise. And again, this is median, not average. So half are below and half are above. The, the median was 55000 Okay, That's much different than the 10 or 8 that you see on Kickstarter. You're looking at, I need to say a $100,000 range, you're looking at some really nice money to put into your business. The maximum amount you could raise is a million. But when you put in your, your um, application and they provide the disclosures back to the SEC for you, you want to identify that you'll accept more than your target if it comes in. Because if you don't identify that you'll accept more than your target when it comes in, they're going to stop it at your target. However, all your financials and all the work you did to prepare for this 
those financials are based on your target. They're based on your target. So when you produce your financials and you're doing your business plan and you're saying, this is what I'm going to give for this investment, your financials should show the target amount. If more comes in, hey, that's your sensitivity, that's your what if on the upside. But when you go look at your financials, show that you expected to get $55,000. I'm paying a certain percent to my funding portal. I'm giving away some free trash and trinkets, and this is how I'm paying it back. And if you get an upside, then you go back and you do an overlay to your plan. Okay? But you should think about raising more. Absolutely, reach for it. If you can get a million dollars, go for it. But be realistic about your targets. Be realistic about um, what you expect to get. Okay? And that's what I just went through here. Now, the financial statements and disclosures, if you crowdsource and you raise, you're a first time or a repeat person, and you raise only $100,000, financial statements should be certified, like if you're the officer of the corporation, you should sign it, but they don't have to be audited. <coughs> when, if, you're going, if you're raising over half a million and you're a repeat, Crowdsourcer, person raising funds, you got to do audited financial statements. But you know what? If you're a half a million dollar business, whether you're crowdsourcing or not, I hope your financial statements are audited. You want them audited because that's just another oversight and it's another certification for you. But you will be expected in this to provide them. But you know, I look at that and I say, you know, if I'm a good business person, I'm doing it anyway. I do. I just know I have to. And I plan for it. Right? If these disclosures, and this is what the third party will do, funding portal or a broker dealer, these are the disclosures that they will prepare and submit in the application for you. If they look familiar, it's because it's in your business plan. Your name, your legal status. This is not eligible for sole proprietor, okay, or partnership. Well, if you're sole proprietor, you can't sell a part of your company. You own it all, okay. And if you're a partnership, flip into an LLC and you can offer something because LLCs can offer shares, partnerships. And that's all that they're saying, is that the legal entity of a, the, the definition, the tax definition of a legal entity that's a sole proprietor or partnership doesn't allow you to play. And that's because of the tax definitions, right? Flip it into an LLC. It's easy. Do you have a website? Do you have an address? I think you do. Okay. Do you play? What is your business? What's your capital structure? Do you own it all? Are, you, are there, you know, are there uh, other people that own a part of your business? Who are the directors and the officers? Okay. Describe your business and your anticipated business plan. Looks familiar. Tell me about the financials. Well, my business plan, we'll talk about it later, is four sections in it. Who's my customer and market? If I don't have customers, I have no money. So, they have my financials, how am I going to run it with my people, and then if I'm going to outsource or use a third party or something, what's my process? That's what's in your business plan, and, I'm, and well, I'm going to wave one later, okay? This is what's in your business plan. It's your financial section. What's, how are you going to use this money? Are you going to buy a building? That's a really good thing if you're going to buy a building. Because you're going to buy a building, it's secure, the heat. There you go. You're going to buy a building, that's a good thing. Secure. You're probably going to pay that back. I look at that and say, hmm, I'll give you my 50 bucks. I can get it back out. She could sell her building. Pay you back. If something happens. Okay. Are you going to use it to buy inventory? I'm an operations manager. If you have inventory, I'm going to kill you. Right? The reason why you get inventory is you get your order first, 
work with your supply base so they can fulfill it just in time. Don't buy the inventory. Because you don't know if you need pink or purple until you find out what their customer base is. So I have this discussion all the time. You can convince me, but I have a good friend who's driving around a new Corvette because I taught him to sell his inventory, and his revenues went up. And they're a small group in Hamburg. They're two guys. They make three to five million dollars e-commerce and telecommunications. They dump their inventory and their terms. Okay. So what are you going to use it for? Now, inside the offering, also in the disclosures, what's your target amount? That was fifty thousand dollars. How much do you want to raise? What's your deadline? There'll be a time frame. I want to leave it open for two months. 60 days, 90 days. Will you accept investments in excess of the absolutely? <laughs> no, absolutely. Take it if they want to give it to you. How are you going to allocate those oversubscriptions though? How do they fit back in? And if you're going to cancel, and so not enough was raised, what is the procedure for canceling? Or your aunt comes through and gives you a million dollars and you decide I don't need this anymore. Okay? How would I cancel? Any related third-party transactions, meaning do you have other loans, do you have other equity shares, you have to disclose if, if that is inside your company when you file your disclosures through your third-party funding portal with the SEC. So if you've got any other related party transactions, you have to disclose them. Shark Tank asks, this, yes, does anybody else have equity in your company? And they go, well, my brother-in-law. They go, hmm, that's what they're looking for here. Okay? Assume, so what if you have separate LLCs? Nope. Do you have to? No, it's, which one are you going to put through the crowdsourcing? Okay. You put the one through that you want to, and the other one isn't. So you don't have to notify if you have loans in the other LLC or whatever? No, no. Why would you? No, because if you're an officer of that company, they're going to figure it out. Yeah. Because you have to disclose, you know, you yourself. But if it's um, if it's owed, no matter what, probably. So if it's a secured loan, if it's an obligation, you signed on your kid's car, that's an obligation, no matter what. You probably have to disclose those if it's an investment. No. Just say all of the investments I have are worth zero. What are your risks and what are your mitigants? I always put together a chart of what are my risks and how am I going to mitigate it. And I can tell you, I shared with you that I'm closing a business right now. I have gone back to those risks and mitigant charts over and over and over. So a risk is somebody puts in a winery right next to me. Oh my god, is that a risk? No, maybe it's not. I build an alliance with them, it's a really good thing. Risk is the market crashes, what do I do? Maybe I sell my real estate and I get out the fence. Okay. Do you have a specialized resource? Do you have an insurance policy on that specialized resource? They're looking for, hey, have you thought about how your business could change? And do you have, have you thought through how you would handle it? So, You can, I want to go back to, you can raise, you can invest as little as $40 and in some cases 10 So just like Kickstarter, it's a lot of small amounts coming from a lot of people. I spend 10 bucks at Starbucks, I spend 100 bucks at White. I'll buy a bottle of wine when I go out to dinner with my husband. Okay, that's the type of small amounts we're talking about. So it's not a risk to the person putting in the money. The, you can diversify, which is good, like we talked about too, because the government's going to cap you on how much you could put in and how much you can lose. Because they decided if it's greater than that amount, they don't want you to play your spots. Everybody sells part of their company for an infusion of capital. So just because it's called crowdfunding, would you sell stock? Yeah, that's okay. 
Would you accept crowd, crowd, crowd funding? Why isn't that okay? Everybody sells parts of their companies to get raised by the farm. It's just a really cool new way, an exciting way to do that. You can offer a promissory note. You can offer a convertible. You can offer common stock. You can offer preferred stock. You can offer LLC membership. Um, membership. All I want you to know when you see this is, I don't want you to memorize this. What I want you to think is, for your company and your situation, what do you want to offer? What makes sense for you? It's wide open. If it's been done, you can structure it and offer it through the crowdfunding. You don't have to say, well, I want to make it a loan and I want to cash it in. That's okay as long as you write it out in your plan. That's what I want to do. I want to give a note, and I want to convert it. If I ever go public, I want to be able to convert it to stock. That's okay. You can do it all in the crowdfunding as long as you line it up and tell them what you're going to do. What I have seen is more along the line of promissory notes that cash out, and what it's really cool, and that's the calculator that you'll see. As long as you say once you you're going to get an interest rate on your return, you put in ten bucks. Current market risk is seven to eight percent. You're getting seven to eight percent. You may not get it for two or three years because that's what your business plan says it's going to pay out, right? But when you've earned twice the amount, so when your ten is turned to twenty, you're out. We have to keep them on. And I think that's very, very cool. And oh, by the way, if you fold, you're not paying it back. It's like stock. Your stock went to zero. Okay? Your company value went to zero. So you know in your business plan where those trigger points are, where you're going to hit those next levels. Time the payouts to those trigger points. Okay? And Consider, well, gee, you know, yeah, I want to convert it to stock, I want to keep them, or I want to give them the option, cash out or convert to stock. You decide in the crowdfunding how you want to do this. Question of thoughts. It's just like any other financial, you know, it's just like any other financial. But now, you can raise, you can raise 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, 40 bucks, up to a million through a structure. They offer perks too. So if you give me ten dollars, I'm going to give you send you a signed thank you note. If you give me fifty dollars, I'm going to send you a mug. If you give me a hundred dollars, I'm going to send you one of my first products. Just like Kickstarter, they offer perks. Okay. So in addition to taking your funds, they also offer the perks. And that's very cool because you're walking around with the bag with the name of the company on it. You're their customer. You're their advertising source. Okay? Um, like we talked about before, the funds are held in escrow. That's because we don't want to, as a startup, we want to protect the investors, but we don't want you to take the money and just take off and go to Canada or Mexico. That's why it's held in an escrow. That's why it goes through a structured release process. Okay? You take you do the timing. You can offer revenue sharing. It's not that one. You set up this timing. You set up what that return is. You set up what those payments are. How the how an investor is going to get it back. You set all that up. Okay? And um, CrowdSafe is an instrument that you'll see as you go through uh, the different third-party interme intermediaries. What that is, is if you see a crowdfunding company that is CrowdSafe, where you see a third-party intermediary with CrowdSafe, that means it's going to con when a trigger event occurs, your, your investment is going to convert to stock revenue. That's what it means. So, and if the event never occurs, oh well, the person lost their $10. But it guarantees you 
that if you made this investment and the trigger points occur that are in your business plan that you've disclosed, your money is going to convert into stock. Companies purchase, companies merge. Company goes to an IPO. You will get converted into stock. And that's what crowd safe means. It's, it's a way to protect the investor. And just a reminder again, you can put in terms for cash outs. So once you, like I said earlier, once the person gets back 100% of their return, cash them out. Okay? You can, you can put in those parameters as triggers in the crowdsourcing. Now, we're into equity crowdsourcing or uh, investment crowdsourcing or regulation crowdsourcing. Why would you do this stuff too if you did Kickstarter? Now, you wouldn't do it to the level of the full disclosures of the applications, and you wouldn't do it to the level of, uh, you know, we talked about here, which is really cool, but why would you know this too if you want to get started? What are you going to give them? What are you, how are you going to give their money back? What are they entitled to? Is it in your business plan? Are you going to cash them out? Are they going to want to see your stock? If you take the money out of Kickstarter, what are you doing with it? Now, the business plan looks like this, instead of a real true big, huge business plan. But they're the same questions that you ask on Kickstarter. Even um, GoFundMe. If I'm making a donation for a friend's family when they went through an incident, I know I'm not getting it back. It's been disclosed. I'm just using the funding portal of GoFundMe to make the donation. But on Kickstarter, even if you're going that way or in another way, you still should be able to answer these same types of questions. In this case, I could ask a question on that last slide. Sure. What you're really talking about, products and personal rewards, are in addition to the no to the common stock. Correct. For the, the no common stock, the investment part. They're in addition. Everybody gets away trade and trinkets. They're fun. Keychains and bags and hugs and thank you notes. They always do. Okay. So, the other side of this, if you're investing, just be aware you may not be able to sell it real quick. So if you made a $50 investment in a startup and an event occurs and you want to sell that investment, you're probably going to be limited when you can't sell for sure. So it's just like any other startup. There's no stock. There's no market for it. And I'm going to qualify that as yet. Because I think, you know, with the ingenuity in the technology field right now, you're going to find a markup market to be able to sell these and exchange these pop up, just like you see a market pop up for exchanging gift cards, you see a market pop up for exchanging, um, what's, what's the terrible thing, condos that you rented, timeshares, you're going to see a market pop up to be able to buy and sell these smaller I haven't seen it yet, because remember, this is only two years old. But it makes sense that an avenue should, should pop up where you should be able to sell your share in nice and buy it in the drawer. So I think that's a really cool technology area that will come here next. But just like any other consideration, you need a life-changing event to be able to sell. So you need a, uh, well, the first one's obvious. You went through, you're now um, converting the stock. So that changes. You're not restricted in your 12-month period because you've blown it off the top and you're going to convert to stock early. That's fine. That will be filed. Okay, it will be filed through your intermediary. Um, some of the other things about uh, yourself and the investor, uh, uh, you have a family situation, just, you know, you're moving to a trust. They're, you're not going to sell, if you make an investment, you're, you're not going anywhere with it for 12 months. But if it's only 50 bucks or 100 bucks, that bottle of wine's gone. <laughs> the dinner, it's way gone. So, you know, think of it as being gone. And if something pops out of it, that's great. But you should know that there isn't currently a clearinghouse to sell these in the market that I found. And I'm qualifying that because I'm giving you my knowledge, but there's lots of wonderful, smart people with wonderful objectives out there. And I wouldn't be surprised if just because I didn't find it, you know, in Silicon Valley someplace, somebody's putting this clearinghouse together. It, it could be. I just haven't seen it yet. But I wouldn't be surprised if it came. So, this I 
thought. Angels and, and venture capitalists bring expertise. Crowdsourcing brings your customers. And this was from the owner of Republic. That's true. And, and I want to build on that, because this is the fun part of it. We talked about all the financials. You got to have a picture of your financial statement, make sure you're a business plan and both. But do you know what a marketing campaign this is? Is a backbone for a marketing campaign? And how much fun it is to put this together? Do a marketing program. Develop an investor deck. It's your pitch. If you were going on the road to show somebody your business, do you have a pitch? Jeff handed out our score belt, the score trifle, right? This is a pitch deck. Our pitch. And you, you're going to want to pitch deck whether or not you do crowdsourcing. You want to go and tell people about your business, your idea. How do you present it? What's your pitch deck? They're going to put it on the website. Okay? Think about your bonus perks. It's a blast. For $10, I'm going to send you a keychain. I'm going to send you a thank you. I'm going to put you on my email list. Hey, you know, if you send somebody to my website to buy something, I'll give you. Some, I'll give you a credit for something. I'll give you another share. This is just a blast. Make your supporters and investors feel involved. Get them to be a part of your business. Your marketing program should be doing that anyway. Your customers are your revenue. I saw uh, totally different e-commerce because I love e-commerce and I love e-commerce businesses. Every person that you have on a mail chip or a constant contact email list, that's worth $1,000 in revenue to you over the lifetime of your business. Okay? Same thing here. You've got a fabulous email list. You've got a fabulous following. You're using the email list differently than your website. They're two completely different things. Okay? But they're your constituency. They're your following. Keep them involved. Hey, you know that one you gave me? We're, look, we just broke ground. Here's a picture. Oh, wow, look at the one you gave me. We just, we just, the first alcoholic popsicle came off the line. Cool, here it is. All right? Look at the money you gave me. I'm going to send you one. Put it in your freezer. Tell me if you like it. Two, three bucks. Keep them involved. They will create the excitement. They will bring you more customers. They will bring you more investors. Because, like the other slide said, those users are your investors. Do the what ifs. What if I'm a super success? Do I want to pay it back early? Or do I want to issue them more stock? Do I want to cash them out? Do I want to ask them if they would do an offer some choices? Do I want to send them a plan they can put on their wall? What do I want to do? What's a, what do I, maybe, I saw a real simple thing that's been used several times. I saw it in California and I saw it used here. Little newsletter. $5 Starbucks coupon. Have a cup of coffee on me. Read my newsletter. They'll read your newsletter because they feel guilty because they got that cup of coffee mm -hmm. from Starbucks on your card. They will read it. Okay? It costs you nothing. Nothing. When you think about, and what I'm comparing it to is when you think about print or you think about you know, I don't know if you guys know the Tony Walker Plaza. One page in that book is $14,000. You can get pretty far with an email list of $5 Starbucks cards to your top supporters. That isn't one page in a Tony Walker Plaza. Okay? What if the company's merged or sold? you got to tell them. If that was an event, what are you going to do with this? you going to roll over the stuff? you going to buy them out? And then we talk about what are the risks and the mitigants. You should be prepared to be able to handle that and disclose that. But to me, this is the fun part. We talked about all the financials. So now you know you're protected as an investor. You can never lose money you don't have. The government said that. You're protected on the upside. You can only raise a million dollars. Match it with all the other funding sources you have. Okay? It follows SEC guidelines. There's third-party intermediaries that have been accredited to be able to represent this. The 
fault with them. If you've got a business, you got to have a marketing campaign. Tie it. Tie it. So, I've got to just say, so what's in a business plan? Okay. Score. Um, we actually did starting and managing your business here. Uh, I want to say it was in the winter because I remember driving down. And it's a one-day event. You were here with me too, yeah, right? And it's everything you need to know in one day to put it together at 50,000 feet. It goes through all the sections. People talk about each one of these, and they talk about them in a one-hour uh, set. This SCORE business plan book has everything but the kitchen sink in it. It's got too much. But if you read through it, you're not going to miss anything. Okay. Some of the sections fit for you, some of the sections don't. But if you go through this thing, and you're going to hit everything you need to, and you're going to be throwing things up. So this is starting and managing your business. I think it's a cost of what, $30 a one day event. We've got simple steps coming up in October, which takes the same thing and puts it across six Saturdays. It's a great way to join a team of people who are as interested in their businesses as you are, and you can put it together and it's not painful. Okay? But you got to put together a business plan. Um, the other thing I want to show you with that is, you have to excuse me because, oh, did I do it or not? No, I didn't. Usually I print on scrap paper. That's the disclosure document that goes into the SEC that they're preparing. Gee, what's your name? <laughs> what's your website? That looks real familiar. And if you've done that, it's a uh, funding. And then you hand it to your third party portal, your, your funding portal, it's done. They're representing you in a way that ties. Otherwise, they will fill this out for you. But I would say you can do it. You're in business. You can do it. You know what you're doing. You know what you want to do. Write it out yourself. And then have them just validate it and add their own experiences to it. But to me, this is the fun part. You know, the put the put together the marketing, put together your business plan. Right. There's N1CE. I love this. And <laughs> I did a plug and play. I tried to find it. I couldn't find it. And I told you that I go back and forth through Florida. I know right where it is. It's in my garage in a box in Florida. Okay? When they first came out, they offered very cool perks. It was a minimum amount of investment, but they offered really cool perks. And like a $75 investment, you got a personal letter signed by the owner. Okay? That you could frame those dollar store one dollar friends it was very very cool like a two hundred dollar investment you got a coffee table book of NICE and what they were going to do in the future because remember they're all bands and concerts and events it was very very cool they were very simple little things but they were powerful to build the brand okay? they raised we funded they raised in 2016 uh, $300,000 from 386 investors. And they did it across two offerings. So you could see one offering brought in 101, another one brought in 177. So um, what I'm going to show you here, and then they did it across Europe by funded by me. But look at this. This was their this was their value proposition. We're going to sell $1.2 million of frozen popsicles at concerts. That was their value proposition. Okay? And, it can, and it's distributed in nine countries, and you can buy it in six packs. I mean, that was their value proposition. And they were tremendously successful. It was all about the concerts. It was all about having fun. Okay? And being responsible. So this they I like to show them because they were one of the first ones out. And if you look at the dates, you know, of 2016, 716 and 1116. This came into existence in May of 2016. And look at how fast they turned it around. 
The other reason I want to show you this is $100,000 is reachable. Okay, and I brought you through all the steps, but let's bring it back down. $100,000 is reachable. Hey, okay, that's realistic. That's pretty cool. I'll take $100,000. Um, I need another $170,000 to raise $250,000, dollars to this. It cost me probably about $5,000 to do it. This is the current one on Republican drones. And you know how drones are hot right now. Look at what they can. The minimum investment is only 100 bucks. It costs you nothing to go in and register as an investor and you can put in your hundred dollars for drones. And the other thing I want to show you is look, they valued themselves at 25 million. Because they're investing a hundred dollars, you're not valued at 25 million. But you know, you put on the valuation that you think your business is with supporting information. You should know what you think the value of your business is. Right? This is awful big for little amounts of a hundred dollar investment. Okay? It's very cool. The deadline is November 1st. So if you think these drones are cool, you got until November 1st to put in your hundred dollars. As of Sunday, they've already raised two hundred and fifty thousand. Okay, across three hundred and ninety-nine investors, and there's fifty-two days left before it closes. And we talked about putting those in. You have to say what your time frame is, what you're going to close. There it is in action. Okay, they've got crowd safe. You're going to be converted to stock if they blow it out. And this is their value price. All right? And they're filing the documents. <coughs> Questions on the valuation cap. Like how they said it. They said it. So you said it, you said it with your accountant. There's, um, if you look at accounting, there's seven ways to value your company. Okay. I think there's revenue, assets, got the other ones are. You want to be able to um, substantiate how you value your company. And, then, and if I haven't started my company, what I think, like, yeah, well, you're based on my your sales forecast page, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Gotcha. yeah. Value your company. You're going to have a balance sheet with your financials, mm -hmm. right? You can value your company off the cash. Yeah. Okay. Things like that. Yeah, but you want to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the other thing I want you to see is if you invest $5,000, you get all of the above, and you get a drone. You invest twenty five hundred, you get all the above. You get a keychain. You're carrying around their name, and somebody's going to say, "What did you do? Oh, I invested in drones. The future of drones. These drones fly in spaces that pilots can't fly. Isn't that cool? I only put in a hundred bucks, but I know through the calculator it can pay off two hundred within two years. Cool. Okay, for a hundred dollars." You get your name on their website. All right. It's working. Drones are hot. They filed. You can go and get the documents. They filed. Okay. They think there's a $127 billion market. If you came to starting to manage your business, your library, we have a fabulous person in the library that is in a relationship with the school. Sandra Courtney, go visit her. She will size your market for you. You don't have to do the stuff yourself. Remember, you don't have to do the stuff yourself. You have advisors around you, you've got score mentors around you, you've got connectors, connections around you. All right? The two guys in Hamburg that are raising three to five million a year, they're not doing it by themselves. Driving the Corvette. They know how to leverage their alliances, and they know how to leverage their connections. They know how to leverage their website, their constant contact list. It's simpler than you think, okay? And they've disclosed that they already raised 3.4 million. So another question about do I have another investor? They've already disclosed that they've already raised 3.4 million from other sources. Okay. Yeah. One of the things that <coughs> is to spend a significant amount on your video. Well, there it is. <laughs> it looks like a, 
simple loop that maybe cost five dollars you could use, not five thousand dollars. My answer to you is if the value is cheap, if the don't do it because somebody tells you that. Remember I said earlier what you might do for, for funding your business is different from what they might do. If a video is key to your value proposition, you do it. If the video is not key to your value proposition, you don't. So go back to what's my market, who am I trying to reach, am I going to use equity crowdfunding, would the, value, would the video be of value to me? Then sure, you do it. But there's a lot of crowdfunding people who have, you know, you can tell that they did it in their kitchen. So it depends on how important it is to you for your value proposition. Since you're using this as an example, do yeah. you know what this module is that they're... Yeah, I do. It's on their website. I just took one page here to show you. Go click the website, and I put it on the top. If you go to uh, republic.co.endemis, you'll see all of it. It goes on and on and on. It goes into who's their customer, what's their history, what's their technology. Don't give away your secret sauce. Great interest, don't give away your secret sauce. I just put it on one page here for an example so that you saw it. Yeah, it's all there. So it would be fair to say that they've got a more elaborate video than... They have many videos. Okay. I just thought that one was, you know, cool to include a snippet. Right? So, but don't you think this is intriguing? Intriguing. Now, if you were on Kickstarter, why don't you do the same thing? What are you giving away? You give me five bucks, what am I going to give you? I'm going to send you a thank you note. Okay? Or I'm going to give you a hundred. The other thing you should see is look, it's top stopped at that hundred and seven. Remember I told you earlier, the government will only let you invest a hundred and seven. And where the seven came from, but you're limited. They're saying if you want to give me your maximum and you're in that Group, I'll take it from But these have, it has all the pieces on it that we talked about earlier. There it is in there. But you know also, what a cool lead behind. We talked about an investor deck. Putting together your trifold. What is your what is your investor deck? What does it look like? Who are you talking to? Steal the structure shamelessly. You don't have to reinvent it, but you're gonna have to do that anyway. Steal shamelessly. You're not stealing your technology, you just say, oh, that's cool. I can make mine look like that. Questions, thoughts? Do you, I enjoyed this. You could tell. Do you enjoy it? Okay. Um, I'm going to go back to the front. Buffalo is behind. I told you my background, Silicon Valley for quite a while. Spin out of Ally Financial from General Motors. Buffalo's behind. SCORE has people across the United States. I'm fortunate I've been through California, Florida, around. I've seen this. Where I see it here is in those breweries. When you hear about crowdsourcing breweries, it's not Lloyd's taco truck where they blew it out because they had a taco truck. It's this stuff going on in the background. But it's pretty quiet in the Buffalo area, but it's out there. And there's intermediaries that are registered. Um, again, my data is a year old. However, they're listed. They're available. These intermediaries play this role. Okay? They're there. They do it. They're not in Buffalo. You're going to be doing it on the phone, you're going to be safe. Right? Or you're going to grab a crop of sport mentor that may be in that area that can help you. Or, you know, you're going to use the support. Of the a couple of items to just, um, in preparation to help the funding portal reach your goals. Remember, separation of duties. Let them promote your business. Let them do what they're there to do. Let them realize that once you start, you cannot engage what you're following. Because it's going to look like you have told them to adjust 
their net worth statement so they can invest. You want to be completely hands off. You want it to be completely transparent. And that's what they do. Okay? So set them up for success. Build your email list. Get your following in advance. Line up your friends and family to say, you can tell them, hey, tomorrow it's opening, guys. Tomorrow it's opening. Go in and give me my hundred dollars. That you can do. But once it opens, you gotta go quiet. Right? But line it all up. Give the funding portal your email list. Give the fun put it on social media. Drive them to the website. Okay? Line up your friends and family. And then they also have their pool of investors that they're going to reach out to. But you really want to build this buzz. Don't go in cold. It's not going to work. You go into cold, you kick, kick starter, it's not going to work. You go in cold to anything. You open a door with bricks and mortar for a retail business. People don't know you're there. You're spending a lot of money and people don't know you're there. People build that constituency, build that base. And you know what? People want to support you. They want you to be successful. They want to be a part of your business. Let them be. It's about old wine. Okay? They're not going to lose their house because they bought the bottle of wine. And that's what makes this so powerful. Okay? That's what makes it powerful. Once it launches, all that you can do is put out one notice on your website. Right? State that the company is conducting an offer. Right? Hey, you know what? I'm providing an offering on drones. You can go to Republic to find it. Here's their website. Here's their link. Okay? You can provide the terms of the offering. Give me $100 and I give you a keychain. And my company's worth $25 billion and I'm asking for 55000 to be raised. And the closing date is Halloween. Okay? Any factual information about your business. You name your address, description, The funding portals will file all those disclosures. They'll fill out all those papers. They will run the campaign. They will collect the money. They will screen the investors. They will advertise on their website, they'll advertise on their social media, okay, and they will reach out through their emails. Excuse me. Why, why just once? Is that part of the regulation? You, you gotta do one at a time. You can't do two um, You can do but no, I'm just saying just the social media. That's the regulation. But can you do on your personal one and as, as well as on your business one? I wouldn't screw with it. Yeah. Personally, I wouldn't screw with it. I wouldn't. If it's one, it's one. Right. That's, that's what I would tell yeah. you. You can pop it up on your website and leave it there. It's only yeah. social media like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, for the predictor. Yeah. That's part of the regulation. So, but if you've done your work in the hands, you're okay. To implement, expect it to cost about $5,000. Now, you're not taking the $5,000 out of your pocket. You're taking the $5,000 off of what they've raised. So if you ask for $55,000 as a target, five of that's going to them for the work they did. Okay? If you don't reach the minimum, it is out of your pocket. If you don't reach the minimum, it's out of your pocket. Is that the minimum loan? Does this go to the funding board of the $5,000? The company is your funding board. Yeah. Yes. All right. You don't pay in advance, or you do pay in advance? Um, there's terms and conditions inside of them. Find one that works for you. It depends on lots of things. How much work do they have to do to get you up? Um, you know, can do they think that they're following? He has the money where they would like to invest in you, like drones. It depends on a lot of things. Um, reach out to them and get their terms and conditions. <coughs> My guess is they're going to ask you for something up front, it's like a down payment, and then they'll pay themselves. Let's talk about Republic, for example. They take 6%. Right? They take, and they take, if you offer stock, they're taking 2% of your stock. 
Yes, it's a promise. Okay. Pardon? Equity. 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 Or the promissory note, the equivalent of having that money already invested. Whatever it is, they are taking two percent. So your business is no, they're taking 6% of what they raised and 2% on your business. Now, this is not scary to me. If you're huge, you can dilute them out. You can buy them out, cash them out. Okay? Roll them to stock. You might want them in as an advisor longer term. 2% is in the noise. When I was in Silicon Valley, we, there was a company that we participated in. It never paid us, though. We wanted it to another day though. There was a portfolio of like 10 companies put together and a group of advisors advised those 10 companies. We expected two or three to make it, five not to, two or three to be on the book. And we got a payout if they went public, okay? We had crashes, we had crashed, and you know, the whole thing went away. But that's what they're doing here. If they take 2% of a lot of companies, that they represent, one of them's going to pay out for that. They don't expect it to be a payout across the board, but if they're representing 50 companies, one of them's going to hit, and they're rich too. But then they're aligned to you because their goals are your goals. You both want this to succeed. They're going to be working for you in the background. Okay. Um, you're going to use the proceeds to pay for the agent we talked about, said it's going to come out of that. And once your offering is closed, expect to give them regular updates so they can put it out on their website and put it out to their phone. Because they had it on their website, they had a group of investors. They want to be able to show that they were successful too and that they represented you. Okay, the other thing they'll do is that annual financial filing, they will get it out to all the investors for you because you have to do annual financials and maybe an update with that annually anyway. They'll push that out to all the investors for you. So you don't have to think about making annual reports and sending them. Just push it to them and that's another service that they do. Um, they will do that ongoing communications and requirements with the investors. They will, um, with the tax returns and financial statements, but I want to give you these considerations. Even though I say I love this and I think it's really creative, you got a whole pile of little owners. One or two can always emerge and become very difficult. You've got a person who put in 100 bucks. You've got another person, you know, who put in 50 bucks. Remember that they're there in the background, okay? And you now have a whole pile of little owners and you're going to have to manage the investor base or your customer base. And just like your customer base, you've got to bell through. There's going to be 2 to 3% that you wish you never sold to. This isn't any different. Right? This isn't any different. Competitor can invest. Competitor gets your business plan. to get your financials. I'm not sure I care. They don't have the specialized resource. I'm the specialized resource in my business. Without me, you can take the business plan. How do I know you can implement it? It's my secret sauce. The business plan represents what you're going to do. It doesn't include the secret sauce of the drugs. It says this is what the drugs are going to do. Okay? Competitors, if you're putting a business plan together, you got to know who your competitors are anyway. So we put in 100 bucks to get your number. If that's what you're concerned about, it isn't crowdsourcing, it's your whole business that we should have a discussion about, right? Um, if you do this first and you're going to go after equity later, realize that any equity investors, private, um, you, angel investors, venture capitalists might ask you to cash them out. Because they might look at them as a pool of uh, irritants. Look at them as a pool of customers. And as long as you keep them in that category of keeping them in the, their pool of customers, you're going to be fine. If you let the person who has the one stock show up at your annual meeting and drive the whole company, then you know you got you got to manage that. That can go. And if you fall short, you got some complications. So you really want to build that. So 
you know, there's some considerations in there, too. So, like I started when I read this to you, because of the risk, the amount somebody can invest is limited to match their affordability and their ability to lose that bottle of one. You can only raise up to one million in one year. But you could raise another million the next year. You could raise another million the next year. The funds come in small amounts. You saw it, hundred dollars, fifty dollars. You saw it on the, the drone website. You must be represented by an intermediary that's registered. If you're going to go through equity, investment, crowdfunding, you must be registered. If you go through Kickstarter, you don't. But like I said, if I was going to do Kickstarter, I would be as diligent in knowing what I was doing. Because it's my business. And I want that, you know, I want that following. Once the process is started, you can't participate. The intermediary is going to drive it. You must, you must have a following. You must have a follow. Email list, customers, friends and family, because you really want that offering. When it pops out that first day, or two days, or first week, if you can hit 30% of your goal, you're, you're flying. You line it up in advance. Okay? And if you're starting through uh, MailChimp, or Constant Contact, or you already got this email file. You're building it up. But you're building up your business anyway, whether or not you're crowdfunding. You must have a business plan because you need it, and you need to present it to the intermediary. That becomes the application. Your financials, whether or not they're audited, follow SEC guidelines, good financial practices. Uh, don't commingle your personal expenses. Take an amount out, put it aside, write yourself the check for the car, don't commingle. Okay? Just follow good business practices. Make sure your plan, make sure you have a crowdsourcing plan. Crowdfunding. Make sure you crowdfunding, not crowdsourcing. Make sure you have a crowdfunding plan. And it's in your marketing plan. And it's in your financial plan. But you can pull it out and show it as one statement as to this is a key point of what I'm doing inside the business. They should be crowdfunding. Crowdsourcing just means I'm sourcing from a crowd. So I was putting this together when I should have practiced. Okay. Uh, just develop your campaign. And that's your marketing. That's your marketing fund. For $10, I'm going to send a thank you. For $50, I'm going to send this. And make sure that those things aren't just giveaways, but they're things that carry your company around with you. So when they're carrying it around, they're saying, look what I got. I did I spent a hundred bucks, but look what I got. Go check out those drones. Isn't that cool? Make them feel part of your success. Engage them. If you've got a product you're bringing to market, Ask them what they think about some features. Do you want the button to be red or blue? They don't care if the button's red or blue, but you got their you got their input on some things that are you know, where they feel they've been part of it. Don't let them make any decisions that are major, but frame the decisions where whatever answer you get back, you don't care. Okay? Remember, the money's kept in escrow. People who are making the investment in you, they're not going to lose anything. If you don't raise your amounts, the money's going back to them. So it's protected for them, and it's protected for you. You can't take the funds and run it off and put it into an offshore account. It's protected. Do the what ifs. What if I'm tremendously successful? What if I hit this trigger point? What do I want to do with that? What if I, what if I do this? What are my risk and mitigants? Do your what ifs. Okay? To be successful, you got to have the thought. You've got to get the business plan. And if you're going to do crowdfunding, make sure you've got a plan. Those are the things I would tell you. Because these are all controllable by you. Okay? 
That's why I put them there. I didn't put, well, it depends, it depends. No, it doesn't depend. You can build and follow. You can build your business. Okay? And you should have a crowdfunding campaign and plan integrated into that. If you have this, you'll be successful. So that's it. Questions? Thoughts? What would you think? Can we get your notes by any chance? Um, I want to change crowdsourcing to crowdfunding on a couple and I'll get you a set. Okay. Anybody heard of regulation crowdfunding before? Yep. Was this helpful? Is what you knew? Yes. Go ahead. Three, three ones. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I need your evaluation. Yeah. Each annual $1 million tranche is in a separate equity event. I'm looking for you and your company, yes. Yeah. So this year, they're drawing 2%. Yes. Next year, they're drawing 2% yeah. year after that. So yeah, but you know what? If you talk to them, work it out. And, um, but that's the way it's from, from a, you know when you read the terms and conditions, it's the way it's structured. But having been on the other side, work it out for them. You're going to ask them to, to um, do it three years in a row, work it out. They'll do it. Um, and from a definition standpoint, yeah. is Kickstarter considered a funding portal? So those are separate entities. A funding portal, think of them as a dummy down broker dealer. Right, so the funding portal then is associated only with the um, regulation program. Right. And then well, they will raise for you too, but they're they're there specifically to manage regulation problems. But they're they're a uh, stripped down broker deal. That's their role. Follow the SEC requirements. Follow the regulations. Um, Kickstarter is a platform. They're not a company. Very product oriented with all the new nuances and, and ways of thinking about this. Have they finally cracked the code where you can have a crowd, crowd fund for service? Sure, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, the funding portals, uh, is there a list of them that you have? You just get all the I did. I told you I get my list, but my list is a year old. I'll include it, but just don't want to qualify it. Okay. Um, the company I like to follow is Republic because they do a lot of website webinars and they do their real basic. I like them. I think they're in the right market for us. But I'll include the list that I'm going to qualify as your one. Okay? And these were the ones about a year ago that were approved, which means some of them may no longer be there. Some are specialized, like there's crowdfunding for real estate. Um, so it may or may not fit your need, but I can get to and I'm just going to qualify, be careful. Okay. So, if you have, I'm sorry, no, that interest in that. Do they go back to the um, public or is it directed from you to them? You to them. Okay. You to them. Okay. I want to go back to something that, and usually it's hard to think, so I don't know your name. If it's a promissory note, those interest payments don't have to be every month. You're setting the terms. You can make the first payment 12 months out. You can make a balloon payment 18 months out. It isn't the traditional, remember the first slide, it's not traditional lending. And I don't want to call it creative, I'm going to call it flexible to match your business and your situation. So if you have a business that's doing one of these, bet. Right? You're not going to make those payments while it's doing this. It's going to hit that hockey stick six months out. Make your sure first payment seven months out. You can do this with this instrument as long as it's disposed. So that's a great question. Okay. Yeah. The, the SECM whatnot, is that all taken care of by Republic? Yes. Yeah. That's why you want to. You don't want to. Like I said, as a small business, you're one person. You can't possibly know everything about financing, everything about funding portals, everything about disclosures. Just be aware that it's there, but that's, you know, an attorney. Yeah. You're an attorney writing a contract, you don't have to be an attorney. Think of them. 
So it's probably cheaper in the long run to go and get an attorney and do all that stuff. Anyway. Attorney can't do that. Not what about me if you yeah, decided to go LLC? That's a different thing. That's what's your business structure. That has nothing to do with cell phone. That's what's your business structure. you got to work with your attorney, work with your right people to decide the business structure that's right for you. Okay? That's not good. This is funny. But yes, an attorney for an LLC, an attorney for a sub house, an attorney for. We can start sole proprietor and convert it. Those are things you should do for your business, regardless of what you're fine. Okay? With any statistics on how much money comes from the $100 people as contrasted to the $5,000? I do, but I'm not, I do, I have some, but I don't think it matters. Well, it's actually, the only question I have to, when you make your interest payments, you make an awful lot of your checks. You are. You are. But your funding portal will do that. I know. Make, you your, make your checks annual. Right. Don't right. make them monthly. Yeah, oh, you're right. Okay, make them annual. That's a great idea because that's where you can design the administration for you. Make your checks annual. Make your checks every six months. So, but you know, they do the GIF. I need to pay back, like say, if I use Republic. I would just write a check to Republic and they would just give They could do that or you yeah, could do it directly. You're going to pay for fee to do that? They, they, I don't know. So either way. Oh, so either that or pay my investor separately. Either way. When we said that some of them provide some services, you should have that conversation with the funding portals that you see. So, do you guys think this is as cool as I do? Cool. Cool. It's cool. For a nonprofit, obviously. You could do it. Oh, that's going to be a part of what we decided to do. No, you could do this for a nonprofit too. Just make it's the same question. Do you have your business plan? Where is your return? How are you going to pay them back? If it's a donation, Go through uh, go fund. It's a donation. So that's why a not for profit. I don't know you can do it, I don't know if it fits, but a not for profit. If it's a donation, just tell them it's a donation, go through go fund. Okay. All right. Please give us your evaluation forms. I'd like to know what you think. Okay? I think it's exciting. Thank you for coming out on a cold and dreary morning, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.